Hi everybody, my name is Dave, thanks for joining me, and today we're going to be doing the Tough Dog Suspension, and at least I'm going to do the measurements on the cards that I talked about on my last video. So, I did some measurements on the driveway, and now I'm going to do some measurements while it's level in the garage. Now, the measurements on the driveway were a bit odd, because uh, on all of them I had three that were identical, and one that was 20, 20 millimeters higher than the others but it could have been a slope on the driveway and the fact that the steering wheel was turned to the left so we'll check it again now now it's on the level and we'll see how we go okay on tape measure let's measure now i was talking to my son about this and he reckons that the best place to measure from is center of the hole because that's always consistent regardless of whether you change the wheel size or whatever you do center of the hub so that's what we're going to do so the rear left is 540 millimeters 540 millimeters let's go measure the front left front left is 525 millimeters so I'll go measure the others front 525 and 530 540 and 540 for the two rears okay Spanner size is 19 millimeters. Oh, this is going to be tight. So I've used the old extension trick there to get this undone, and it's come off quite well. I'm surprised. I suppose before taking it off any further, I should try and get the top undone. Let's do that. So we might try a 19 mil socket with a breaker bar. Won't fit. We're going to need a shorter spanner. Let's try that. I think I've got it. A little bit anyway. Go with open ended then. Oh, the whole thing's turning. The rear shock is off. It's in quite good condition. There's the rear shock that's replacing it. Considerably large. So let's try and get this on. I think what we'll do is we'll put the top in first. And then allow the bottom to come on.
Okay, so we'll put the new ones on. I presume you can see it that. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to put some grease onto the spigot. All the way around. Like so. Not too much, just put the, uh, just to coat the metal. Then I'm going to put some copper coat onto the thread. Copper anti seize compound. Now Now there's a bit of mis misinformation going around. Well, I'm assuming it's misinformation. It's to do with these these washers that are concave or convex, whichever side you look at. Some people say they need to be put on like this. Some people say they need to be put on like this. Now, what do I think? Well, not being able to find the right information, I think they should go on like like so. Now, many people think they should go on like so. But, why would they go on like this? Well, for what reason would you put them on like this? When you can put them on like this and they will protect the rubber... rubber um, seal to some extent seems a bit odd to me that but <clears throat> so I'll be putting mine on the way I think it was intended not what I think people intend That's interesting, that washer didn't go anywhere near as far along. I'm in a lot of pain today. I shouldn't really be doing this, but anyway. Well, that's an interesting prospect because that doesn't fit. So, what we might do is loosen that off a bit so we've got a bit of play. Ooh, the battery's nearly flat. I was working away. Well, you did your programming, didn't you? Yeah. What happened? Did it work? Yeah. Second one was a lot, a lot easier and a lot better.
I'm going to erect it. You've got it, have you? No, I've got a spare. Yeah, both of them erect it on your right hand side. And a hammer. Where's the erect it, sir? Well, you mean, no, I haven't got a erect it, no. Can we get it? Um, well, I've got one, but I, I, I'll put it back. Just trying to think of the easiest way to get this to work. So what I discovered at the other side, the auxiliary fuel tank was the problem that was in the way. So this time it should be a bit easier. Taking the bottom bolt off, the bottom nut. That's it, spanner. It looks like we've had a bit of a rubber uh, Seal problem on this side. Now this side's still going to be a problem, but not as much of a problem. I still don't think I'm going to be able to get the ratchet spanner on that side anyway. Not be able to get it on this side in here. Yes, that's good. easier on this side. tight. I didn't need it to go tight but anyway it is what it is. I'm going to just move you down here a bit so you can see what's going on and I can use my right arm.
so I'm, I do apologise, your battery ran out. Uh, I've had to bring down an auxiliary, but I've got the other rear shocker fitted in there. So what I'm going to do is put the wheel back on, wire it down, and measure it. Anyway, let's do some measuring. So we've got all before and after. I went to the centre of the rim, centre of the hub, up to there, and it's 54, exactly the same. And that's 54, exactly the same. And that doesn't surprise me, because it's not the shock absorbers that do the height, it is the spring. Let's move to the front and do the front ones. And then there was light. Here we have the top of the shocker. Here we have the bottom. Let's see if it's 19 still. No, front shockers are not 19. That's interesting. What's that, the 17? Let's check that, the 17, and see if that's what it is. Exactly what it is. 17. So. I'll find it 17 at Ugga Dugga and then we'll uh, get that off. That's a bit easier on the other side, I'd say. Right, what's that one? That looks like smaller than 17. Maybe 15. Long. I need that long reach for two. Wow, that's going to be fun. Okay, I'm going to have to loosen it off somehow. How am I going to hold this steady while I turn that nut at the top? Well, a bit of penetrating fluid ain't going to go on this.
tell you what, this is an advantage of having non gas shocks. Because gas shocks just want to expand everywhere. And they need to go out, they need to go out the back, not the front. These are in good nick. They're not bad. They might be a bit wallowy, but they're not bad. Fine press, actually. How good they are. Not bad. There's no oil leaks on them. They're uh, they're going well. I don't know what sort of shocks they are. The nitrogen filled shocks. That's for certain. So I won't have the same problem putting these ones on. However, these shops are way, way bigger. So what I'm having trouble with is I can't get this rubber grommet off to be able to get the rubber boot on and then back and then Put the rubber boot in the right place and then get it back over so i'm going to have to try and pry this off using a screwdriver and it is working there we go so when you do this you're going to have to remember the order they're in I think the problem is you just can't get your fingers underneath. Until you can do that, you can't shift this. Once you get your fingers under, you can pull it off. But until you've got a big enough gap to get your fingers in, it ain't going nowhere. Right. So that's... where this sits. Let's pull it out a bit. Alright, it's as far out as it'll go. The rubber boot goes on. This comes down, sits there. And then you put that on. And you put this on. You may have to squash it right down to get this to work. Right. And then that goes on. And then that goes on. And then this goes on. But they have to go further down than they are. On, and then something underneath it to lever it up. And it looks smaller like this spanner.
bad. That works. So let's put this this uh, let's pull that apart again. It's always quite handy if you have the right tools for the right job. In this case, a zip tie gun. Let's have a look at the other side. It goes through like that. And then that. You won't even record it. Right, so here we go. Front shock absorber here again. Oh, this has got a label on it. Oh, XLG by AYN. The issue is, though, that they're nitrogen shocks and not not foam cell. From these front shocks, you can get the ugly dugger onto the bottom. Right. Now it's 17 mil at the bottom. Now it's 19 on the back, it's 17 on the front. Nut spring washer, mallet. Get the bolt out. Now, once you get that out, you've got a lever. See, the big problem with nitrogen filled shock absorbers is that they they expand constantly. So as they expand, they they make it so you can't get the damn things out. And you need to push these backwards. 14, remove the locking nut. I had the same problem with the front, right? It's, the whole barrel spins. So I just grabbed it with this. And I did the nut. Now they may look adjustable these front shocks, but they're not. That, what looks like an adjuster on the top there, is just so you can hold it steady. We may have to compress the shock to get it out. Ah. And you can see how they're expanding out. Good condition though. Very good. Very impressed. Whoever assembled these did them incorrectly because they put the big nut on the top and the little nut on the bottom, but the little nut is the lock nut. The big nut is the lock the nut because they're tightening. So they put them on the way around. KYN, K KVN. I reckon they're a Chinese copy. XLG. Sounds a bit Asian, doesn't it? I've got a bit excessive with my uh, lubrication on these ball joints, I think. They're all a bit excessive. I'll spill that with them. Never mind. Shock absorber is out. The new one is going in. You have to remove the nut off the top. And for some reason, it always wants to stick. Now you'll need a screwdriver just to pry. The, ru the rubbers are really stiff. So you need to pry the rubber up a little bit to get some distance between that and the washer. So you get your fingers in and pull it off like that. Okay, so you can leave it turned to this point, but I'm going to take this off because I want to put the rubber boot on. Again, you've got to lever it up as far as you can and hope that you can get some gap to pull the the rubber off, which is looking like I can. So the boot goes on, and you can zip tie it on at this point if you wish, or you can zip tie it on afterwards, it's up to you. I'll give it a try, zip tying it on now. Now I learned from the last side that it's better to put the base one in first, so if it will go in, it will. We'll do that first. Now I'm just putting a bit of general purpose grease on the bolt head. This is a bolt, not a screw, because it's got a plain bit.
That's the difference between a bolt and a machine screw. A bolt has a plain area like so, and a screw is, is threaded all the way to, th to the head. video here you just saw me tighten up the uh, nut on top of the shocker tight as I could that's not correct and I just want to correct that here what you need to do is you need to tighten down those nuts until you see the bushes tightening up and squishing out as soon as that happens you need to back off the nut about half to one turn otherwise you'll damage your uh, rubbers so I reckon that's done so it's wheel back on again I can't have a video without a rant so let's have a rant don't you get fed up when people say fibre to your premise? The grass for the English language, and this is an Australian bloody woman. Fibre to the premise. So, as you know, we've got fibre to the house. I'll call it that. Fibre to the premises, or fibre to the house. And uh, it worked perfect. Saturday and Sunday and Monday. Well, on Tuesday, guess what? MBN turned off the wrong account. They turned off the fibre to the premises instead of the fibre to the node. And they can turn it off in an instant and it takes them five to nine working days to put it back on. Can you believe that? So somebody somewhere is going to get their asses to when I get to speak to them. I don't have a problem with people making mistakes and turning off the wrong thing. I do have a problem when... It takes them five to nine working days to rectify a problem they've created. And that, as they say, is that. Suspension done. Four and a half. I suspected <clears throat> before we fitted these shockers, the rear were five forty. After we fitted the shockers, the rear were five forty millimeters from the center of the hub. To the lower part of the wheel arch. However, the front were 525 and 530. They're now 545 and 545. I won't have that wallow in this, but we can't do. I won't know until tomorrow when I go out in the car. I can't go out tonight. Press my car and my other cars in the way. So let's put the tools away. Now you may well have seen the videos I linked to in my last video regarding uh, Iron Man chat about difference in shocks etc but the guy on there has has reiterated what I've been har harping on about for years they are not shock absorbers they are shock dampeners now I can hear you all saying yeah 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 he says that now but you can ask Rob or you could ask Rob if you knew Rob as you don't know him, you can. Some of you know him. Job is done. I'm just standing up and I'll go upstairs and edit the video and then we'll take it from there. How about that? Sounds like a plan, doesn't it? So, I'll see you tomorrow for the, the test drive and, uh, and maybe we'll go and do a bit of a an off-road, see what it's like sort of uh, event. I don't know. We'll see how that goes. Um, slight problem there. I haven't left enough space to shut the door. I've got a bit at the front, so I'll move the car forward. All right. Thank you, and I'll see you out there.